Hey there folks, Seth Mayo here, Curator of Astronomy for the Loman Planetarium at the Museum of Arts and Sciences. I'm back with you for another weekly update of our Sky Tonight, and hopefully uh, you've been enjoying these so far. Uh, this week we're covering April 6th through April 12th for what the sky looks like uh, between those dates. And hopefully you get out and look at what's uh, available in our sky. And as usual, we're using the wonderful piece of software, Stellarium, to show us the wonders of the universe as seen from Earth. And we have our location set to Daytona, where our museum is located, or at least for Central Florida. Don't worry, again, if you're not in this part of uh, Florida here, or at least in Florida in general, um, this will cover the sky if you're generally in the Northern Hemisphere, at least around 30 degrees north latitude. So anyway, we'll get right to it, and we'll start things off by speeding up time and going into the future so we can get that sun set in the west. So let's kind of move our sky over to the western part here so we can see the sun set. And uh, the great thing about simulations is we can speed up time, manipulate time, or anything else as we please to help us explain these things uh, better. And sunset, this week is a little after 7.45, around there, is when we'll expect the sun to set. And as you've been noticing, sun is setting later and later, right? As we're heading farther in the spring, closer to the summertime. Um, and our days are getting longer, our nights are getting shorter, all due to Earth's tilt at 23 and a half degrees. And we're tilted, and Earth goes around the sun. And throughout the year, the sun hits us at different angles and different amounts of energy from the sun hits us. So we have you know, sometimes more light, more energy from the sun, sometimes we have less energy from the sun, and that determines our seasons, right? So we're kind of seeing those changes reflected in even the sunset time. So let's make it happen, sunset after 7.45. What's been great is right around sunset, and just after, you'll find a really bright object in the west of been talking about a lot, but it's still worth mentioning the planet Venus, second planet from the sun, just shining brilliantly in our western sky. And uh, again, rule of thumb, stars twinkle, planets not so much. And so you'll notice Venus will have a pretty steady glow as the second planet from the sun and the hottest planet in the solar system. So it's been a good year so far, 2020, for the planet Venus, and a lot, get a lot of questions about this object, so uh, definitely take a look when you can. But we'll continue on, speeding on up time until we get to, uh, just kind of closer to like the nine o'clock hour, maybe around uh, 8.40, 8.45, around there is pretty good, you know? And uh, at that time, we still have a wonderful view of these winter stars located in the west and southwestern part of our sky. And uh, actually last week, we did talk about this group of stars, a very famous star cluster called Pleiades, because Venus was right over it. That was called a conjunction. And you could still even consider this conjunction when two or more objects are close to each other in the sky. But the real close conjunction occurred last week, and that's when Venus was right on top of that cluster. Again, Pleiades or the seven sisters here. And so that was spectacular to see that. That was really cool to see those two things so close. And they're still close. And you have some time uh, to see them as the sun continues to kind of go below the horizon here. And these objects move to the west. You'll have a good part of the evening to find those objects in that part of the sky. And uh, that, of course, sits inside the constellation called Taurus the Bull, a leftover winter constellation. And along with Orion, there's Orion's belt, and the brightest star Sirius, these three, and uh, even more, we have uh, the two dogs of Orion, Canis Major, Canis Minor, right there. Uh, the Gemini twins right here, and even uh, Auriga with its bright star Capella in this area. These all winter stars you can find in the spring. You can still see them in the west. Uh, I've been mentioning uh, these a lot, um, but it's still good to kind of um, to, uh, to, to look at these in this part of the sky. Now, let's move over to the eastern part of the sky because there are some great springtime objects and hey look at there the moon very large moon at least beginning of the week here and we'll get to the moon in just a second here um, but what i really want to focus on are all these spring stars here and i mentioned a little bit about this uh, in the past here but uh, the moon has passed through these stars 
And if you look carefully in this area, you see this kind of hook-like shape. It almost looks like a backwards question mark. We call this the sickle of Leo. Uh, the sickle shape, a uh, sickle like a farmer's hook-like tool they used to use. That's kind of the shape you'd find there. I like to think of it as like a backwards question mark. It kind of looks like that to me. That is the head of Leo the lion. So this is the head, stars of Leo. This is the body, somewhere in this area here. And this is the tail of Leo right here. The tail looks like a right triangle here. And so we can kind of uh, outline that, click on this here just to get the outline of it. But also to me, uh, it looks like a broken clothes hanger in the sky. Uh, that's just to me, like one half of a clothes hanger. So that's, uh, you know, I like to think of sometimes more modern things too. Uh, it helps me to remember this. So that's Leo. And right kind of near the chest of Leo, see that star right there? That's called Regulus. And Regulus is a quite interesting star. It's actually uh, a quadruple star system. All right, so you got two stars uh, that are orbiting around each other, another two stars orbiting around each other. And those two binary stars are kind of going around each other as well. So you have four in total. And so a very interesting group of stars there. Uh, Regulus, the name actually means little king. Uh, I believe that's a, a Latin name. Um, it comes from like regal, right? Because regal is associated with royalty. So uh, Leo, especially lions, are usually coupled with this idea of royalty. All right, and you see that a lot. A lot on flags, on on um, on various banners, you'll find lions, right? And so there's a connection between that. But anyway, that's Little King is the name of that uh, star, at least the meaning of the star Regulus there. Fairly bright star in the chest of Leo the lion. There he is, uh, this giant lion, kind of a scary creature from Greek mythology. It was not so nice in many of the stories. And one of the people who fought Leo was Hercules, as you may have heard before. Anyway, so that's great for the springtime. Now, if you really want to focus on more springtime stars, let me turn off some of these other constellations here and just focus on the spring ones here. There we go. So there's Leo. Now, uh, if you're looking in the east at this time of year, you might find this kind of meandering group of stars underneath Leo. Now, it's really not like really bright, but it's pretty big. And what I'm kind of tracing out is one of the largest constellations in the sky. It stretches across a huge area and uh, stars sort of kind of sliver through the sky. And that slithering kind of way of describing this may give you a clue. It's kind of like a snake-like creature. And I'll just click on one of the head stars here. This is Hydra, the sea snake. And so very, very large constellation. This is from Greek mythology, cut off one head and two more grow back. Kind of one of these scary sort of giant creatures. Another creature I think Hercules fought as well, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, Hydra is quite large. And I usually can find the head here. The head uh, is sort of head-like in its shape here. Uh, and I usually can find that. It's not too far from Regulus and the star Procyon, one of the dog stars that are part of uh, the, from Orion the Hunter. Anyway, so Hydra is there. Uh, if you want to stick with some spring stars here uh, in this area here, um, we have this little, very actually interesting shape, kind of low in the southeast right now. This is called Corvus the Crow. Believe it or not, that's a crow in the sky. That one really blows my mind how that's a crow, but, you know, that's what was imagined. Didn't make these up. And then near the kind of middle section of Hydra, we have this shape here that is supposed to be something called Crater the Cup. Again, uh, you know, I don't know how that was thought of, you know, maybe some of the stars there kind of form a cup-like shape. And then we also have this star kind of down here below the moon. This is Spica, uh, another very bright star in the sky, binary star. And Spica, which actually means ear of wheat, is part of uh, uh, Virgo the maiden, uh, this woman here. And so these are actually very well-known spring stars here. Actually, one more spring stars and constellations. We have Arcturus here. I've mentioned this a couple weeks ago. Arcturus is the fourth brightest star in the sky, and that is part of something called Bootes the Herdsman. And so this is an interesting constellation here. And that star, uh, Arcturus, is uh, the brightest star, I think, in this area of the sky. I believe so. So really, really shines. 
So these spring stars uh, are great for this time of year. Of course, we're in the spring, so that makes sense. And we do actually have a star map in our Loman Planetarium lobby. We have, we have a collection of star maps that date back hundreds of years ago. It's an extraordinary collection that we have. The biggest star map is a picture of this spring sky, especially the stars I'm kind of uh, squaring out for you here. Those stars here um, uh, are in the, the star map from a few hundred years ago. And it's a lovely map with not just the star positions, but the constellations labeled and colored and drawn in. It's a beautiful piece of art and science kind of mixed together. And it shows these constellations and stars. So I think it's always kind of fun to see our collection of star maps if you're ever in our Loman Planetarium Lobby in the future. It's quite nice. Okay. So spring, of course, is here, and we're really seeing those stars. And uh, the moon. All right, so this week the moon is big and bright. Uh, at the beginning of the week, the very beginning, at least on Monday, the moon is still a gibbous shape. But by Tuesday, that's April 7th, that's a full moon. And so that's when the moon is completely opposite of the sun in the sky. It's the only way it can be a full moon. And uh, during a full moon, one thing you can't expect are tides to be more extreme because the moon's gravity is coupled with the sun's gravity in bulging the earth. And that bulging of the earth on both sides of earth causes um, the tides. So we go through the bulge of the earth, that's a high tide, and then through the not so bulge of earth, and that's the low tide. And that is caused by the, by the moon and sun. But when the moon is full, it's kind of adding to the sun's gravity as well. You get that combination tidal effect. And so tides are strongest actually when the moon is full or new. And that's when the moon, sun, and earth are kind of lined up in a straight line. And so that causes the most of the strongest tidal effects. Um, so that uh, occurs with the moon. So that when the moon is big, it causes stronger tides. And also, uh, obviously, it's brighter in the sky. So this area would be much brighter in real life. You'd see a lot, you'd see a lot less stars in this area because of light pollution of the moon but that's just the reality of our moon anyway one last area i just want to show you here we're going to speed up time into the early morning and as we do so you'll see the spring stars rise higher and higher as we move into midnight hour uh and this is the night of the full moon here so just so you, so you know we're now after midnight you'll start seeing summertime stars so if you ever want to see the next season's constellations get up real early in the morning and you'll see them rising out of the east and what I did mention last week is this wonderful grouping of planets rising in the east here. And that's the three planets you can see. I'm just going to stop it just after 6 o'clock and I'll scoot the sky over this direction here. And see these three bright objects? Those are three planets. We have Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, all very close to each other. That is spectacular. And they were really close last week, but they're still close this week as well in the morning. Get up before sunrise. Uh, and uh, look towards the kind of the ocean, at least, at least if you're in Daytona, um, look towards that eastern part of the sky and you'll find these three planets, which is spectacular. So take advantage of these planetary groupings. You know, they don't always happen every year like this, and so it's really nice. So 2020 has a lot of great planetary stuff going on, uh, uh, so stay tuned for that. So then we'll get sun to rise here. We'll do that. That's kind of, always kind of fun for a lovely sunrise in the eastern part of our sky so there you have it uh another week of our sky from april 6th to april 12th hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully it will inspire you to get out and explore the night sky on your own and uh, again we're going to continue this kind of weekly update digitally and remotely of our sky so stay tuned we have so much stuff to talk about and uh, if you want to keep up to date on what we're doing check out our website and our social media facebook instagram twitter and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, do some stargazing on your own. So take care. Happy stargazing. And we'll see you again for another night sky 